All right. This job was about um, transforming this telescope into a nice mid configuration. And it happens that it uses a primary mirror that receives the light from the stars. It bounces back into a secondary over there on the spider. It reflects back into the tertiary mirror in here and out on the eyepiece for the person to look at. Um, it took a bit of work um, from Barry in order to do the numbers on the distances and the figuring of the secondary, and also um, designing the right position for the tertiary mirror and where things are going to be located, because these telescopes come to focus in a certain position, and then you have to manufacture the frame in order to get that position right. The original telescope was a Newtonian configuration, and for that purpose, the primary mirror is parabolic. Now, converting it into a Cassegrain, we have to put in a new secondary mirror, and the mathematics tells us that's got to be a hyperbola-shaped mirror. And that was um, cut out from blanks and ground and polished and figured at my workshop. Um, to bring the image to a constant elevation position, we have a tertiary mirror that reflects the light out the side through what we call the, um, the altitude axis of the mountain. And in doing that, the eyepiece will always be at, a, at the same height from the ground um, over a long period of time as the telescope cracks, tracks, the, um, the eyepiece will move sideways slightly and that can be accommodated by the person observing, or if they take too long, um, they have to move the chair. The um, telescope itself has uh, motors to track the, the object in the sky, and um, so there'll be no uh, problem for the observer to worry about, except looking at what the, uh, what the instrument is pointing at. To complete this project, we have used uh, funding from the government, from our own sources, and specifically raised uh, funds to a total of $35,000 uh, to match uh, the grant of $50,000, and we have put the remainder in from our own sources, our own funds. So there has been a huge amount of work including putting down asphalt paths for wheelchairs to be wheelchair compliant. It was all part of this project. It isn't just this magnificent telescope. There's an observatory and all the paths. So the project is almost done. It involved a lot of people, Mark, Barry, Diego uh, and others, Gavin, who've done a fantastic job. It is not one person. It has been a great team effort to go this far. Um, we'd like to thank the uh, generous Victorian public who contributed. We would like to thank the Western Benevolent Association for their generous contribution who made this telescope possible. I actually joined the society um, finding out about this project and um, after getting my own telescope I realised how hard it actually is to use a, a stock standard telescope that anyone can buy. Um, using this it means that I can actually explore my hobby and you know, develop my own skills and develop what I like and what I want to do. Um, without this telescope I could probably use mine at home but I know that I'm going to be real sore afterwards. Yeah so I I am only stuck to what the horizon lets me see. I can't bend my telescope further down because then I'm bending my back. It's whatever my garden chair is really on angle with. So, yeah. So, uh, I, I know for a fact I'm not going to be bedridden by looking through this yeah. beautiful axis telescope. I want to thank the whole entire Astronomy Society of Victoria for doing this and for making it possible for people with disabilities and for people like me that have mobility issues. Um, yeah, it really opens up a whole new doorway for allowing me, allowing more people to explore a new hobby. And yeah, I can't thank them enough.